Hello, welcome to our virtual candle making class and today we're going to be making an 8 ounce candle with 12.5% of fragrance which is going to make our candle an eau de perfume. We're going to start by actually looking at the supplies that you might need during the process. So you're going to need the actual kit that you received with all the necessary supplies to make a candle. You're gonna need a glass with the three inch across diameter, which is perfect for the number eight wick that you received in the kit. You're gonna need the container that you're gonna melt your wax in, and the con container should be suitable for your microwave. And also, you know, just your good mood, inspiration, you can burn some sage in the meantime and take this process as a nice and relaxing learning experience. So we're going to start by looking at the supplies that we received in the kit. And you have here two fragrances. You also have the number eight wick, the steering stick, the wick holder, and the little glue dot, as well as the bottom label. So the bottom label goes on the bottom of your glass. And this is, it's essential for a candle to have a warning label just from the point of view of fire restrictions, it also tells you some important information, for example, about trimming your wick. So, I don't know if you experienced that earlier, you probably did if you burned candles before, but sometimes your candle creates like a mushroomish part on top of the wick, and basically, once you have that mushroomish part on top of it, um, you know, if you light your candle without trimming, it's going to give you a very smoky fire. Um, it's going to create the blackness on the rims of the glass and it's going to burn much faster than usual. So just a little tip for you before burning the candle and uh, if you're noticing the mushroomish part on top of the wick, get your scissors, trim the mushroomish part off, make your wick short, small and nice. It's usually one quarter inch, the perfect length. And Go ahead and light your candle and enjoy. This way you're not going to be inhaling smoke as well as, you know, uh, you're going to use your candle much longer. Yay! <laughs> so, you can find the instructions on the bottom of the label, but now we're going to move to our wig um, part. So, there are plenty different wigs that exist in candle making. As far as we know, we have 30 different CD wigs. Um, but then the one that we're going to require, the, the one that we're going to be using today actually, is going to be number 8 CD wig. Perfect for inch across diameter of the vessel that you're going to be using here. So what you're going to do, <clears throat> um, you're going to need this wig as well as the little glue dot that's going to help you to stick the wick to the glass. And um, it's a double sticker. It's super easy. It's clean to use. You're going to take the paper off from one side of the wick sticker. You're going to stick your wick to the glue dot. Take the paper from another side. <clears throat> and you're going to go ahead and center it in the glass. Perfect. So once you stick the wick to the bottom of the glass with your wick sticker, the next part would be centering the wick in the jar. And this is pretty essential part as well. If you want your candle to burn nice and even, you're gonna go ahead and stick your wick into the little hole of the wick holder. And um, just gonna go and eyeball the centering part here. And you can lift your glass on the side for now. Also, just want to give you an example of why choosing the proper size of the wick is really important when you're making candles. So the wick that we have in this jar with the three inch across diameter is number eight. But for instance, say, you know, you would use number two, which is the thinnest wick we got. 
what's going to happen if you use number two in this jar? Your candle is going to create a little hole in the middle of the wax and um, you know it's going to start tunneling inside. The rest of the wax is going to stay on the rims and basically you know you're just going to waste your whole candle. It's not going to have enough um, the wick is so thin that it's not going to have enough power to, bol to burn the whole diameter of the candle down. For instance, say you know, you're big using this size that is much bigger than the one that is needed for your diameter, number 30. What's going to happen is going to be an opposite effect of burning because the, way, the wick is going to be way too fat, like too thick for this small diameter. Your candle is going to overburn. So first, you know, the rims of the glass are going to turn all smoky and black. Then your glass is going to be overheated. And then, you know, if your wick is too big for the, for the certain diameter of the vessel that you're using, your candle can easily catch on fire. So it's pretty important, you know, to burn test your candles, to make sure that you're using the proper size of the wick. We do also share our wick chart with you based on our experiments that we do here in the studio. So you can check it on our website, uh, stonecandles.com. You can go to the wick product and the description of the product you're going to find the wick chart available for you so all you're going to need to do is to measure the vessel that you're using and see you know what we recommend for the size perfect so now once your wick is nice and centered in your jar you can put your glass aside for now and we're going to move to the next part all right, so now let's actually talk a little bit about the formulas that we're going to need to make an 8-ounce candle. So here, what you need to know. You need to know your fragrance amount and your wax amount with the preferable fragrance percentage that you're going to be using to make a candle. So this is an 8-ounce candle, and our fragrance percentage is 12.5%, again, which is the highest possible amount. In order to find out how much actual fragrance you're going to use in this 8 ounce candle, you're going to do just a little formula here. You're going to multiply your total fill of the candle, which is 8 ounces, by your fragrance percentage, which is 12.5%, in order to find out the fragrance amount. So if you do that in your calculator, for instance, you're going to actually see that you're going to need 1 ounce of fragrance to make an 8 ounce candle. And then, you know, you're going to just deduct the amount of fragrance that you found out from the total fill. So 8, your total fill, minus 1 ounce of fragrance is going to be 7 ounces of wax. So your formula for this candle is actually 1 ounce of fragrance and 7 ounces of wax, you know, makes 8 ounces total and it's 12.5% of fragrance. <clears throat> so now... You know, we're going to go ahead and actually melt the wax. And while we're making the wax, we're going to talk a little bit more about the fragrances that we have here, about the notes and the blending process. Cool. So for the wax part, we're going to be using the microwave to melt our wax down today. Again, it's not a traditional way of melting it. Um, you know, if you're making candles at home, you might consider some type of wax melters, hot plates, and things like that. But since we're just making my one candle, that's actually going to be pretty fast and convenient. Cool. So we're going to set the timer for three minutes in microwave. Also make sure that the container that you are using is, you know, suitable for your microwave. Um, I'm, just measuring, I'm just using the measuring cup, which is... You know, works perfectly here. So three minutes, the timer for the microwave. Also, you know, each microwave is different. So you might require a little bit extra time if you see that your wax is not melted completely. Maybe add 20 more seconds to it and see. But um, basically, it's going to place the wax in the microwave and uh, we're going to wait until it's melted. Three minutes timer here. While the wax is melting, let's actually talk a little bit about the fragrances and the fragrance blending. 
So you picked two different scents that you're gonna mix together and create your own custom combination for your candle. I usually say this, that there is no right or wrong about blending scents, but I would say, you know, there's probably like the main rule about the fragrance families that exist. So the fragrance families are those bottom notes, middle notes, and the top notes. And the bottom notes are usually the scents like Santal, Tonka Bean, Vanilla, and the middle notes, also sometimes people call them heart notes, because those are all the florals, fruits, and spices. And the top notes are usually the citruses. So everything like lemongrass, vervain, those are the top notes of the fragrance. When people smell the product, they usually think that the top notes are the most powerful ones, like that citrus goes to your nose first. Honestly, these three families are equally powerful. They're just opening up in a different way, in a different timing, and have a different purpose in serving to the, to the scent. So, you know, the top notes, since they're very powerful and they go to your nose first, that's like a first impression of your scent. The bottom nose at the same time, it's the base of your fragrance. So if you think about these families as a tree, the base notes are gonna be the roots. So the base notes are gonna make your scent strong and powerful and they're gonna make it last, you know, um, longer, I would say, and just serve as some type of ground, you know, for your scent. The middle notes, that's literally the soul of your fragrance. That's where you experiment with different fruit and spices, and that's where you have fun and develop, you know, your own perspective of the fragrance. And um, what you're gonna be doing today, you're actually gonna be playing with those different notes and experimenting and seeing, you know, how they all combine together. So if you look up on the description of the product, of the fragrance oil, you're actually gonna see the top, middle, and the bottom notes here written. So I'm gonna be making the Havana and Santal candle. I would say this is a, probably the most popular combination and it's just so good. Santal is, you know, it's like a light version of um, sandalwood and Havana is our tobacco fragrance which has been popular and bestseller for years as well. So we're gonna mix those two to make like a beautiful, musky, at the same time, woodsy um, type of candle. And it uh, looks like the wax is melted. So perfect. We're gonna go ahead, grab the wax. You wanna make sure that the wax is nice and melted. Also, usually when you're making candles, with this coconut wax, your perfect temperature for melting, for adding the fragrance, and for pouring the candle is 180 degrees. By the way, this wax that you're gonna be using is it's probably one of the best wax that I've ever seen or tried or worked with. It's 100% natural coconut wax. that has main ingredient coconut. There is a little bit of soy and apricot oil as well. So it, make a pro so it makes a proper density for the wax. And, um, you know, by its nature, it's just really nice, soft, and creamy, and it's really easy and satisfying to work with. Cool. So, once your wax is melted, we're just gonna go ahead and add the fragrance to the melted wax. You know, the, the also super exciting part about this wax specifically, it's that because it's 100% natural wax, you can apply it on your skin and use it as a So some spa salons, they actually order coconut wax candles from us specifically for massage purposes, and they light these candles during massage, they let them cool a little bit, they pour them on their clients, and they basically do massages with them, which is pretty awesome, you know, to use it as the base for your massage. So once you have your candle ready, you know, it's gonna be also a body candle. You can use it on your skin, you can use it as a body balm, as a hand lotion, and test out your, your fragrance, your custom fragrance that you created as well. 
So you're going to go ahead and add the fragrance as the next part to your melted wax. And um, once the fragrance is blend it with the wax, you're just going to go ahead and use your stirring stick to mix the fragrance and blend it together with the wax really well for about five seconds. Here's the time you can also smell the combination that you just created. Once the wax is nice and hot, you can really enjoy the scent now as well. It's beautiful. <sighs> So now you're going to go ahead and, um, you know, you're just going to pour the candle. You already have your wick jar ready, so you can just bring it closer to you and slowly, no rush, go ahead and pour the mixture in the glass. Again, it's a nice and satisfying, relaxing process. Really helps to clean your mind, you know, focus on the moment, and um, actually create something with your hands. And all the senses are involved here. You know, you're you're smelling the fragrance. You're actually making something with your hands. You're applying wax on your skin. It's pretty awesome. And this is basically how we make candles. Perfect. So once you pour your candle, you can just leave it in the room temperature for about, you know, five hours, I would say, somewhere in a safe place so it can cure. First, you're going to take off the wick holder, then you're going to use your scissors and cut your wick one quarter inch. Once it's trimmed, you know, definitely smell it. You can, um, again, test it as the, like a, you know, body lotion or a hand lotion. Enjoy the fragrance fully and light it and enjoy. Cool. So, now, you know, if you're interested in making candles at home for fun, or you want to even start your little candle making business, um, we do offer candle making supplies such as fragrance oils. We have pretty big selection. Um, it's you know up to a hundred different fragrances that we have in stock. We have beautiful glassware for the candles as well. And uh, of course we do sell this 100% natural coconut wax um, the little things like wigs and stickers, we do offer those as well, and you can find everything on our website, stonecandles.com. If you're a candle maker, you can sign up for our wholesale program and get, you know, products in bulk discounted as well. And thank you guys so much for being here today and making candles with me. My name is Anya, and, um, you know, it's been a pleasure, so I hope you really enjoy your candles and um, come visit us in Santa Monica in our store location. Yay! <laughs>